Hey everybody, Monday evening to you. It is Weather for Weather Geeks time. This is the first video we've done since uh, Friday evening's snow. You know, I did Weather for Weather Geeks at around, you know, my usual time, 7.10 or so Friday evening. And just after that, it became apparent that we were in some trouble when it came to our forecast in parts of the area as the snow rates were very, very impressive for some of us. And, you know, it resulted in the event overachieving for parts of the area, not the entire area. Our forecast was just fine in parts of the area, but there was a zone um, kind of, you know, if I were to kind of uh, zoom in a little bit on our area here, there was a zone from eastern Mahoning County through Lawrence, southern Mercer, kind of in this area I have circled, where the snowfall rates were impressive enough that you got a couple of quick inches just like that. And then, you know, of course, it kept on snowing for a little while, and some places in that circled area ended up with four or five inches or so worth of, of snow. In other parts of the area, of course, the snow was not quite as problematic and as impressive in our general forecast was fine. But the mistake I made um, Friday afternoon leading up to this, you know, our original forecast was two to four inches. Uh, we emphasized Friday afternoon into Friday, early Friday evening, the two over the four. It was becoming apparent by looking at the computer modeling at that point that four was probably just not going to happen, but the computer modeling was wrong. Uh, the models were not able to pick up on those intense snowfall rates that occurred. You know, we went from a lot of Virga snow evaporating before reaching the ground to bam heavy snowfall rates in a matter of minutes and you know that wasn't uh, wasn't picked up very well on the modeling and uh, human forecasters such as yours truly were kind of fooled as well and so it uh, you know it was a little bit hairy for a time friday evening now temperature wise uh, we did crack freezing last night for the first time since january the first our official high today 34 now that was a pre-dawn high we spent the midday and afternoon largely in the 20s. And wow, what a cold start to January. Almost six degrees cooler than the average. And this is our coldest start to January in seven years since 2018. Coming up on Wednesday, since we're halfway through January and also halfway through meteorological winter on Wednesday evening's weather for weather geeks, we'll kind of review the numbers through the first half of winter and, uh, you know, kind of project forward in a lot more detail than we have of late with what we, you know, kind of expect at the end of January into February, in other words, the second half of meteorological winter. I've got a few questions on social media about the ice coverage on the Great Lakes and when can we expect uh, the lake effect snow to no longer be an issue. And the answer to that for us in Northeast Ohio and Western PA is we need Lake Erie to pretty much freeze over. As long as there's open water, lake enhancement, lake effect snow is still going to be an issue when the fetch is right. Now we do have some tenuous ice on parts of uh, Lake Erie you know, on the, on the south shore and also especially that shallow western end of Lake Erie. But the ice coverage is still only 9% on the Great Lakes as a whole. And on Lake Erie in particular, we're still under the 30-year average. Now, I expect the ice to expand a lot, not only in Lake Erie, but throughout the rest of the Great Lakes system over the next couple of weeks. Because, of course, we've got a lot of cold weather to talk about over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, technically, we're still behind average, even though, of course, January is off to a pretty cold start. We haven't had extreme cold just yet in January. Now that's going to change, I think, a couple of times over the next 10 days or so. In the meantime, on this Monday evening, the weather is quiet. Check out that beautiful full moon rising this evening. Now the clouds will return overnight, but right now it's still fairly clear. We have some lake effect streamers well off to the west, kind of a westerly flow over the Great Lakes. And speaking of lake effect snow, in anticipation of an uptick in the lake effect tomorrow night, into parts of Wednesday, the Weather Service in Cleveland and in Buffalo has hoisted some winter weather advisories and lake effect snow warnings from Geauga Lake and Ashtabula in Ohio to Crawford and Erie in PA up into uh, southwestern New York around Buffalo and points off to the south. I don't think the lake effect is going to be real problematic for most of our area. We'll talk about uh, you know snowfall potential here in just a second, but one thing for sure, we got a lot of cold coming our way. Early evening temperatures below zero in places like Fargo and Bismarck. Minneapolis is setting below zero pretty soon. Uh, Chicago and Milwaukee in the teens. That is the air mass that is, of course, is coming to the south and east. In the meantime, quick detour out west. They're on pins and needles out here in uh, Southern California because the winds are going to start ramping up again tonight and into Tuesday. And of course, the humidity is still real low. They, of course, have not had any rain. And so the fire danger is very high once again. And so fire weather warnings are out. Fingers crossed that we don't have a repeat of last week for those poor folks in Southern California. Back here in Northeast Ohio and Western PA, we're going to wake up tomorrow morning with wind chills below zero. The air temperature will be upper single digits to around 10. Uh, the wind chill below zero, though. And the wind chills tomorrow, probably not much better than five above. 
as we get into the afternoon on our Tuesday. Now the snow. We do have some snow in our forecast for tomorrow and uh, with some lake effect and lake enhancement tomorrow night and Wednesday in parts of Northeast Ohio and Northwest PA. Some of us are going to see a little additional accumulation, but with tomorrow's snow, and I'll show you, uh, you know, kind of a model depiction of how things will transpire on Tuesday momentarily, but we are expecting some snow showers Tuesday afternoon. It's not going to add up to much, probably an inch or less, but I do think with as cold as it's going to be tomorrow, every flake can stick, and I think we're going to have some, at least some isolated, you know, slick surfaces to contend with for our Tuesday afternoon. The, the snow, you know, this isn't going to be the biggest lake effect event in the world, but I could see where we get, uh, you know, some amounts of up to a handful of inches up near Chardon in northern Joga County, parts of Lake County, Ashtabule, and then especially to northwest PA and southwest New York as well. I think the best odds of two inches or more in our viewing area over the next 72 hours would be about where you would expect them to be. Northern Trumbull, northern Mercer, especially northern Mercer, from Greenville over to Sandy Lake and towards the Venango County line. Pretty good odds you're going to pick up a couple, if not a few, inches of snow between now and this same time on Thursday. As far as the timing of our snow showers across our entire viewing area on Tuesday, they're not here first thing in the morning. We'll be just fine in the morning. It's going to be cold. It's Tuesday afternoon. Some light snow pushes in. Now, this may start as some light snow that isn't real intense, and maybe you'd never see an intense snow shower in your location, but especially late afternoon, you know, some of the high-res modeling is, is kind of squally looking um, with some of these snow showers that uh, may pivot through. The snow squall ingredients tomorrow aren't as high, aren't as good as some of our more recent squally days, um, but I can't rule out a pretty hefty snow shower impacting parts of the area before the afternoon and early evening is through on Tuesday. Then again, the lake effect and lake enhancement will be most problematic in northwest PA. Southwest New York, you got to fetch off of uh, Lake Huron here, and then off of the eastern end of Lake Erie, depositing you know, plentiful snow, Chautauqua and Cattaraugus counties in southwest New York, Erie and Crawford counties in northwest PA. For us, in a, most of our viewing area, we wait until Thursday then for the next you know, kind of substantial weather system to push through. It's, again, not all the snow in the world, but I could see where region-wide we pick up a couple of inches, maybe an inch or two or something like that, uh, from the widespread snow showers with this next disturbance coming through on our Thursday. Beyond Thursday, uh, the weekend. I, I think there's going to be a little push of warmer air Friday night into Saturday morning. So while I don't have it graphically listed here, precipitation is pretty likely Friday night and Saturday morning, but it may be kind of a rain-snow mix, and I think impacts would be pretty minimal from that. We are watching the trends for Sunday and Sunday night. You know, the atmosphere is going to try to get to get its act together for a decent snow event in the eastern U.S. Sunday into Sunday night. At this point, the, the model trends are not real optimistic as far as any sort of big ticket event anywhere, really. But it may be kind of a moderate event if things come together as they could. Off to our east, across parts of Pennsylvania, New England, Around here, maybe kind of a grazing, or it may just miss us completely, and we might just see flurries on Sunday. So, keeping an eye on the trends there. I, you know, I've gotten a few comments about, "Hey, what about this big snow on the 20th?" I think people are seeing some, you know, goofy social media posts, particularly on Facebook, about uh, you know, a big winter storm early next week. That looks very unlikely for our area. I think MLK Day and Inauguration Day next Monday, a week from today, is likely to be blustery and colder, but a big snow event seems unlikely in our story for next week will certainly be the cold. Now, I think this will be the coldest weather not only of the season, but in a couple of years. The intensity of this cold next week, especially right around Tuesday the 21st, this is not something we've seen since Christmas Eve of 22. It's been over two years. This is a lobe of the polar vortex meandering over Hudson Bay and just far enough to the south, and it's going to drive some really cold air down. We haven't been below zero since Christmas Eve of 22, and I think we've got a pretty good chance of going below zero. I think there's a chance that on Tuesday the 21st, we don't make it out of the single digits for daytime highs. We've got the Barney colors on the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. A lot of purple here. It is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a cinch. It's a lock that this is going to be a cold, cold stretch next week. Look at this, 8 next Tuesday. That's the high. That's 26 below average. When you have a temperature departure in the heart in the dead of winter, the climatologically coldest time of the year, when you have a temperature departure of 26 degrees below average, that means that's some impressive cold. That's not just typical January cold. That's not, hey, it's winter, so what, kind of cold. That's that's very notable cold. And again, something we haven't seen for a couple of years around here. That'll do it for me on this Monday evening. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll see you right back here on Tuesday.